African Great Lakes are regionally important centers of commerce. Lake Tanganyika is the largest of these lakes, and the people that live along its shores depend upon the lake for food, water, and transportation. But if you dive below the surface of the lake, you discover an amazing and beautiful variety of animals found nowhere else on Earth. In order to ensure that the unique fish and other animals found in Lake Tanganyika continue to thrive, we need to understand the ecosystem that sustains them. I work at Lake Tanganyika in Tanzania, in East Africa. So Lake Tanganyika actually is the second biggest lake in the world, and it is bounded by four countries. We just happen to work in the Tanzanian part of it. One of the things that we're interested in is the fish that actually eat algae. Now, this is something that only really happens in the tropics where you get fish that can just eat nothing but algae. It's kind of if you just decided to eat nothing but celery and carrots, you know, just, just plants. But the trouble is that's, that's not a great diet and the amount of nutrition that's in their algae is really important. And one of the things that we're looking at is the effect of changes in climate and changes of how people are using the land around the lake on how nutritious the algae are. The way we're looking at this is we're going to different parts of the lake and we're learning about how the fish are behaving, what they're eating, and how fast they're growing. And then we're also, at the same time, looking at how nutritious the algae are. With this project, most of the fish are found on the lethal dawn in the rock shore of the lake and they spend most of their time in the shallow part of the lake. And they are feeding in the algae as the main source of food. We saw differences in food quality, in the algae quality. Some of the sites, they have high quality algae, which is good for fish growth and development. And some of the sites, they have poor quality algae. And we assume that because they need algae for their growth, reproduction, and maintenance, so these sites which have got poor quality, they're going to affect fish development as well as fish growth. That's why with this project, we decided to monitor or study fish growth in different sites. We have 10 sites. A herbivore fish, which depend entirely on the algae. So most fisheries from this lake, they do their activities by fishing bigger fish, which are carnivores. They eat herbivore fish. So because most people, they depend on these bigger fish from the lake, and these bigger fishes, they depend on herbivore fish, the one we are studying. And then the herbivore fish, they depend entirely on the algae. So if the algae is affected in one way or another, it's going to affect the herbivore fish, which are small fish, and then because the bigger fish, the carnivore fish, the one which are captured by the fisheries industries, depend entirely on our herbivore fish, the one we are studying. So they are going also to be affected because they cannot eat algae themselves. They cannot go and scrub algae from the rocks. They depend on the herbivore. So if the herbivore, which is in between the algae and the bigger fish, is affected, then everything within the system is going to be affected. So algae is very important because it helps actually the fishery industry to prosper and continue. In order to see their growth rate, we cut the fish and then we tag them. So the way we catch the fish from the lake we just put down the net three to five meters and then after putting the net one person should run trying to chase the fish on the other side so that fish can move towards the nets 
So as the fish move toward the net, then that's where they entangle themselves in this particular net. And then we pull out the net and then we take the fish slowly from the net without harming them because they are so delicate. And then from there, we put the fish in the bucket full of water. And then from there, you take the fish, you tag. And then after tagging, you have to put back the fish in the other bag in order to see does the tagging affect the fish before releasing the fish into the lake because you have to monitor the fish for at least 10 minutes to make sure that the fish is okay and then you can release back into the lake. But before releasing them we have to weigh to take their length, total length, focal length and then weight of the fish. And then after that, we tag individual fish. So how we get the growth rate, you take the final weight minus initial weight, divided by specific amount of the time. For with our experiment, is going to be two months. So this is the growth rate. So this growth rate will tell us whether different size, having different food qualities in terms of algae, it will affect the fish growth rate. Since we saw differences in, in, in algae, we have also another project where we decided to observe the fish behavior. I was observing fish in 10 minutes. So within these 10 minutes, what is the fish doing? The food maybe is not good, so is the fish going to spend much time eating or doing other activities like resting because the food is available so I don't have to worry, I'll eat whatever I want. Or maybe fighting aggressive behavior. So we are going to analyze and then see, does food quality affect their behavior? That in high quality diet sites, maybe the fish were just fighting. Because they, they, when they eat, maybe after a few minutes, they have enough energy for growth, reproduction. So the rest of their time, maybe they are resting and fighting. And maybe uh, in poor quality diet sites, fish were spending much time looking for food swimming, eating, swimming, it, because they have to compensate for the deficiency. They don't have much food. The food is so poor in quality, so they have to keep on eating in order to have at least required amount of energy to grow, to reproduce, and to survive. So that is our, our assumption. And high variation in sites in terms of food quality, we are expecting to see the differences in behavior too. There are so many factors which affect algae quality and due to all those factors which affect the algae, which is very important for these fish, at the end it will affect their growth. If they're not getting enough algae, not only enough but also the quality is poor because of this, all these activities, it's going to affect their behavior, it's going to affect their growth. Eventually, uh, because a herbivore, they depend on algae. but Within the trophic level, we have carnivore, which depend on herbivore. So if these herbivore are going to be affected in between here, also the food chain along the lake is going to be affected. And people, they depend also uh, from this lake having fish, because fish is very important for their protein. They don't have any source of protein. So even the fishing industry is going to be affected. Our research is helping us to understand how the fish that live in the shallow waters at the edge of Lake Tanganyika interact with the algae that they eat, so that this globally and regionally important lake can sustain its diverse life and the people that depend on that life long into the future.